pelvic inflammatory diseases. Pelvic inflammatory diseases are a common cause of infertility amongst most women of reproductive age. Today we are going to look at the meaning of pelvic inflammatory diseases, how you can identify them and how you can treat them. Welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Raisha, a pharmacist and a fertility and women's health expert. If you are new to this channel, please do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell down below. So, today we are going to look at something we call PIDs. PID stands for pelvic inflammatory disease. So when you hear somebody say PIDs, a doctor say you have a PID, they mean a pelvic inflammatory disease. So, what is a pelvic inflammatory disease? As you hear, it is an inflammatory disease of the pelvic region. What do I mean? It is a disease that causes inflammation on the pelvic region. When I talk about the pelvic region, I talk about these organs, the ovary, the uterus, the fallopian tubes. And other organs of the pelvic region, such as the bladder, the, u the ureters, and the rectums. Who are the women at greater risk of getting pelvic inflammatory diseases? Number one, women who are menstruating. Number two, women who do not use contraception. Number three, women with multiple sexual partners. Number four, women who do not use protection during sexual intercourse. And number five, women who live maybe in a region with high prevalence of STDs. And so, what are some of the causes of pelvic inflammatory diseases? So, pelvic inflammatory diseases is caused mostly by STDs. These are sexually transmitted diseases. We have chlamydia, we have syphilis, we have gonorrhea. Actually, gonorrhea is the most common cause of pelvic inflammatory diseases. Another could be IUD insertion. What do I mean by this? So most of the time when an IUD is inserted, because an IUD is a contraception method, right, that is inserted, most of the time we have hormonal or non-hormonal IUDs. And so when it is inserted, it comes, they're most, mostly it is inserted uh, through the vagina, actually not mostly, it is inserted through the vagina and comes and sits here. It, it comes and sits somewhere like here. So now this is your IUD. And an IUD can cause pelvic inflammatory disease. But let me tell you, most of the time we find that these women are put for follow-up for the first four months after insertion of the IUD. It does not mean that an IUD will cause, but we are saying it could cause a pelvic inflammatory disease. And so when you have your IUD inserted, the best thing is to follow up with the doctors for checkup for up to four months. Now, from there, now the risk subsides. Another cause of pelvic inflammatory diseases are infections. What do I mean by this? Infections such as the UTI, infections such as candidiasis, the fungal infections, such as bacterial vaginosis. But these infections, they, usually, they are usually found at the surface, here on the vagina. So it is your duty as a woman to take that infection up here. What do I mean by that? You find that some women usually insert spindles into their, into their vagina up close to the cervix. Some say maybe you're cleaning, uh, you're cleaning your vagina. Okay, and so now you, when you insert fingers into your vagina, you've carried this infection that was here and you've carried it all the way up here. And so there is an, an, there is an increased risk of this infection now spreading to these organs of the pelvic region. That is what we call dodging. So you find women dodging, dodging, maybe saying that you are cleaning. And these can spread infections that are normally found or that could be found on the vagina too, to the cervix and to the uterus. And so, what are some of the signs and symptoms of pelvic inflammatory disease? Number one, the first sign of pelvic inflammatory disease could be abdominal pain. 
abdominal or even pelvic pain. So you find that this woman is experiencing abdominal pain or even pelvic pain. And this pain is worsened during sex. So they have pain during sexual intercourse, something that we call dispare union. When you hear dispare union, that means pain during sexual intercourse. Sometimes you can use these, these big, big terms to confuse people so that they don't understand what you're talking about. So you find that these women have pain, abdominal pain or pelvic pain that could be worsened during sexual intercourse, during exercise or when you're moving. You start, when you start moving, you feel a lot of pain. Another thing, it is an abnormal vaginal discharge. You see a discharge that is not white in color. Maybe it is greenish, yellowish. Okay. Another thing is abdominal vaginal bleeding. These women could experience abdominal vaginal, maybe post, post coitus, maybe after sex, you start seeing that you are bleeding. Another thing that they could experience are things such as urinary frequency, where you find that you are urinating more. Okay, or even constipation. So those are some of the signs of pelvic inflammatory disease. Okay, and it is very distinctive because maybe if it is caused by something like gonorrhea, the gonococcal uh, PIDs, that is pelvic inflammatory disease that are caused by gonorrhea. So you find that these women usually feel pain during the last days of menstruation or the 10 days after menstruation, the first 10 days after menstruation, you're feeling a lot of pain. That could be indicative maybe of a PID that is caused by gonorrhea. Again, this pain that women with PIDs experience usually last less than seven days. It doesn't last for more than seven days, at most less than seven days, seven days or less. And so now if you find that you're feeling pain for two weeks, the pain is there for three weeks, then here we start thinking about something else because now this definitely is not a pelvic inflammatory disease. How do we treat PIDs? So we have to look at the underlying cause. We have said that PIDs are mostly caused by infection. Now this calls for the doctor to treat the infection. Now this is whereby the doctor uses antibiotics to treat the infection. And when the underlying infection is treated, now this resolves the pelvic inflammatory disease. Another thing is now prevention. We have to prevent. How do we prevent yourself from getting PIDs? Avoid douching. We've talked about douching. When women insert fingers right into their vagina, maybe trying to clean, to remove, you know, some things from there. I don't know what you're removing. Please avoid that. Okay. I had a very good analogy that says the four finger rule. What do I mean by the four finger rule? Where your four fingers cannot reach, leave that place alone. Number one, we say the vagina is self-cleansed. It cleans itself. That is why you, you find that even after menstruation, the vag with time now the blood goes away and you get clean discharge because it is cleaning itself. It is a self-cleansing organ. So it does not need you to go there and clean it. It is self-cleaning. So if your four fingers, they cannot get inside there, that means you should not go inside there. Okay, so that means that you should not go insert fingers there trying to trying to clean it. You just clean on the surface without any soap, without any water, and that will prevent you from getting a PID. Another thing we talked about IUD insertion. That I'm not saying please do not insert an IUD. No, I'm saying that when you get an IUD inserted, you should go for follow-up for at the first four months, okay, to reduce the risk of getting a PID. Okay, and so after the four months now, the risk declines and there is no risk of you getting a PID. We also talked about infertility, PID causing infertility. So what is the relation between PID and infertility? I want you to look closely here. We said PID is the pelvic inflammatory disease. So underlying inflama eye, there is inflammation. Where there is inflammation, it means the swelling. You find that maybe when you injure yourself, maybe when you get a burn, okay, or when you hit yourself, the body first swells. There is a swelling. There is that pain that you feel. That is what we call inflammation. So there is that swelling in the pelvic, the different pelvic organs, okay, that is infected. So there is that swelling. There is that pain. Okay, and so now due to that pelvic inflammation, maybe that could occur, there is what we call scarring. 
there is what we call swelling that could occur. And so now, when the egg is released, it is, the egg is excited, coming, coming, but now it meets a scarred region. Okay? And the sperm is here, 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 but it meets a, a scarred region and so cannot meet the egg. Another thing is that, yes, it could pass, the sperm could pass here and fertilization takes place. The egg and the sperm fertilizes. But now, they cannot, the zygote cannot move to the uterus, leading to what we call an ectopic pregnancy. An ectopic pregnancy is where now the zygote implants itself in the fallopian tube. I want you to look at the fallopian tube. So this is normally where the baby is housed, the uterus. The uterus can expand to accommodate the baby, can expand during the different stages of pregnancy, becoming bigger, bigger. That is why you see now when a woman is pregnant, it is small, becomes bigger, 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 like that. It could also have house twins. You see, you find now that this woman has twins or even triplets, and they can carry it to term. But now it has not, it has failed to come to the uterus, and it is here. It has implanted itself here. So with time, it is, as it is becoming big, becoming big, it is pressing against the fallopian tube. And so now this leads to a lot of pain. So you find that most of the time, these women who have ectopic pregnancy, they experience a lot of pain. And it is usually a medical emergency because the baby cannot grow here. Okay, And so that is how PIDs are related to infertility. And there you have it, guys. I hope you have understood PIDs, the signs and symptoms to watch out for, and the causes of PID and how you can treat them. If you like this video, please do not forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed, please, my dear, subscribe and hit the notification bell.